Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So today again, back to our GraphQL. So uh, in the last video, we have seen what is the advantage of GraphQL and how exactly it is different from REST API. Today, we are going to talk about the core features of GraphQL. You can see on my screen that I have uh, three different uh, sections are available. You can see it over here. Online underscore user, user and two rows. This is called what? This is the type of uh, GraphQL objects that I have created. Example for any e-commerce application, I have a online user, I have some a user, and then I have some to-dos list over there. So it means three different types. So these types are called objects, okay, in GraphQL language, or they are also called types over here. So three different types that I have created, and each and every type having its own fields over here. So these are called fields, right? So this is uh, this is called a field over here, like that. Then if you see that, okay, these three types are interconnected, it means I have the third field, which is having one user object and user object is connected over here. So this is my second object. This is my first object. And this is my third type or you can say object here. And then this user is actually connected with this user and it's having its own field ID name and then two rows. So this square bracket means this square bracket mean list, just like we have in JSON objects also we have JSON array. Same thing is a array list or list that we can represent. It means for this particular user, what are different two rows? So that's why the two row is connected over here in a separate type. And then two rows are having its own fields over here like that. And then it's having one two rows user object also, which is connected over here like this with this user, a second type object that we have created, right? So this is how you can see that, okay, they are interconnected over here like this. So remember, these are called objects or types and every type is having multiple fields over here field number one field number two and field number three like that right and these types they can be interconnected so let's see if you have uh, three types over here they are interconnected like that fine so this is the first thing that you have to understand in graphql now how exactly the schema will look like so if you see the schema over here see for let's see for user i want to define some schema schema means what type of data what type of field over here? So for example, this is type equal to user. ID is what? It will uh, generate one uh, unique ID from the GraphQL server. And you can see this not over here. Not means this field is mandatory. Name is equal to a string. Again, not means it's a mandatory. Email ID, a string mandatory, and age will be an integer. So this is what the type user is uh, defined with its uh, field. ID, name, email ID, and age over here like that. Then in GraphQL, you will uh, deal with three important concepts. One is the queries, mutations, and the subscriptions. Queries means the way you are going to get the data from the server. So here we have to write some queries over here. Mutations, just like create, update, and delete. So we have, we know that, okay, there are three or four operations are available, CRUD operation, that create, retrieve, update, and delete. So the queries will, will be used for the retrieving the data to get the data. Mutations means the way you are going to modify the data on the server and get updated data back. So that's why we can create the data, we can update the data, and then we can delete the data with the help of mutations. And then we have very important uh, feature that is called subscriptions in some of the cases. Let's say you are going to maintain some real-time connection with the server or real-time events that you want to get it. For example, any live football match is going on and you really want to get the real-time events from the uh, live server. Whenever any object field is getting updated, you want to get that data in your app automatically in that case you can write some subscriptions also in your graphql and you can get the live event data from there so we will see in the upcoming chapters what are different uh, syntax work queries mutations and the subscriptions also these are the three important concepts that you have to understand for graphql right now if you really want to practice and you really want to see that how exactly the graphql will look like and how to hit the queries and everything there are multiple clients are available multiple uh, development tools are available some you must have heard about apollo graphql you must have heard about hasura uh, graphql apis then uh, uh, graphql playground is available graphql ide is available there are multiple uh, graphql uh, servers are available and you can build up your own apis and then practice and they provide some practice uh, examples apis also I would uh, prefer this uh, GraphQL Hasura that is really, really good. What you just need to do is that simple go to hasura.io, learn GraphQL, GraphQL IO, okay? Hit this particular URL. I'll send this URL in the description also. And you just need to log in. After that, you just simple sign up with your Gmail account or something and then log in over here. And then you can play with the GraphQL over here. First of all, this is the post call. You will see this is the URL that you can hit. 
you can hit the same url from your uh, postman also or any other rest client that you want to use you can do that and these are the two <coughs> headers we are passing these are the request headers the content type will be application json and the authorization will be a bearer a token so this is a token will be generated on the basis of your account whatever the account that you have created over here and this token will be unique in your case if you really want to add some other key also you can add it over here but these are the two mandatory uh, headers that we have to pass then in the left hand side section you will see that okay this is the query mutation and the subscription so let's talk about some basic queries over here as i told you there are uh, two different types are already available or three different types are actually users uh, two dos and online users for example let's say i want to fetch some information about the user you can simply select this checkbox and this is a graphql uh, syntax automatically will be created over here from this particular users that what you want so you can simply write your own query directly over here let's say i want put a st um, starting bracket and ending bracket i simply write id it means i want id it means give me all the users with id and then you hit this particular uh, graphql api you will uh, get the result over here like that you can see there are multiple users are available and then the it's giving you the complete users array over here with only id if you really want to include name also so you have two choices either you write name do not write any comma over here or you can if you don't want to write name here you can select this uh, name checkbox automatically it will be added over here and then you run it again so now along with the id you will be getting name also you can see this is the id and the name so this id will be generated by the <coughs> graphql server automatically because the schema is defined like that only name is coming in the string format like that now let's say i want to add to do's list also so to do's uh, to do's uh, list also so when you run it so for to do's also it's a different type it's saying that from the to do's what exactly you want i say okay fine to do's you give me the title of the each and every to do so this is a separate object that okay you have to create and under to do's we need a title fine and then you run it again then it will tell you that for every user id name and to do's list also you will be getting it so it is hitting the server and uh, it will take some time to get the response because there are so many users are available and then you can limit the users also let's say i want only five users or three users for example let's see for this particular users i can put a limit so these are some attribute also you can add it so let's do one thing let me put some limit over here it means i just want limit for five users and then hit the query once again okay so now you can see that okay you are getting only five results over here in the json object in the json format you are getting it right so likewise where condition also order by distinct on a limit five that we have written over here like that also you can simply do that okay and then you can see that okay to do's list for this user we don't have any to do list but for this user we have title and the title test and for this user flutter development or something like this we are getting it fine so likewise you can simply uh, hit the query you can design the queries and uh, same query you can use it in your postman also so now i'll show you in the postman and uh, this is my postman uh, that i have opened i simply go to a new request over here so simply click on new request here and this will be a post call so simply select post over here and this is my url so simply copy this url and you paste it here and then uh, in and what you have to do as a header we have to pass two keys over here one is what one is the content type and uh, the second one is what the second one is the authorization uh, token that we have to pass so this is my authorization and the complete bearer token along with this bearer keyword we have to add it over here fine so this is uh, got added after that we have to create a body what type of body we have we don't have any json body or something like this we don't have any a uh, raw body or binary body we have a graphql body so this is the option provided by the postman you simply select this graphql and this is the query that you have to write so what you do whatever the query that you have created you just copy this query from here this will become your request body right guys let me just pull it out like that so i want users limit 5 i want from the users type i want id and name and from the to do's type i just want title and when you hit the server okay so let me just send the request to the server server will be going to the hasura.io and then you will get the response over here like this <clears throat> so this is the response that you will be getting it here exactly same response that you were getting here as well same response you are getting in the postman also so likewise you can simply hit the query and uh, you must be knowing about that in your development team what kind of a schema that they are using what are different types that they are using and accordingly you can build up the queries 
and uh, you can hit the queries in your postman or maybe in some uh, clients like that also you can use that right so there are multiple let's see along with the users type i want to add one more i wanted okay how many online users are available it's a different uh, type so i want to put a query on online users so simple select this checkbox so one more section will be added and from the online user what do you want from the online user i want last seen and the user these two attributes and what other users are available which are online so simple select the name so from the user object again you select the name so this is a separate section okay from the users and this is a separate section from the online users now if you really want to limit it out you can put a bracket over here and simple write limit uh, colon let's say i want only 10 data for that and then you hit the query once again you will get right you know online user data separately over here in the form of json so this is such a nice thing you just need to hit the query and then prepare that same query you just copy it if you get it and then you can use in your rest assured and postman so later on we will do with the rest assured also how to automate that paste your query over here and then hit the response and then let's see what is the response that you are getting it see this is the response that we are uh, getting here from this for this particular query the same response that we were getting see online users we are getting and uh, users response also we are getting make sure you are passing the right header with your authentication token so this is about the basic stuff that uh, what do you mean by schema what do you mean by type and objects later on today we just have seen very basic about the queries later on i'll tell you what do you mean by mutations and the subscription and what are the different uh, types of queries that you can create so we will learn those things as well there are so many attributes so many varieties of queries that you can write what are the syntax for that it's very very simple guys you will enjoy learning these things so that's all for this particular video. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Please subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any issues. Bye-bye, guys.